Hi Internet and welcome to my DIY channel. Today again a Blender video for all who are looking to get into Blender 2.8 and want to create models for 3D printing. Blender is not a cut tool. It's a very good mesh modeler and a fantastic visualization tool. But Blender lacks of many cut tool features and precision functions required for modern cut work. If your focus is on design and creativity, Blender is the right tool to use. And if you know how to, there are workarounds to circumstance the limitations. The major changes in the new versions are a completely updated viewport through which the 3D model is viewed with easy to use 3D navigation controls. An icon set is used for all commands. Make it easier to the designer memorizing the Blender commands. By default, selection click is now the standard left click and there is a modeling mode where only that commands are shown that are relevant to modeling. Blender setup. By default, Blender calculates all dimensions with Blender units, which technically use one meter as a standard unit. For a better overview in modeling, I change the measurement system in the scene settings. Here I select the metric system with a scaling factor of a 1000, so 0.001 and millimeters as unit. Now all dimensions in Blender are displayed in this format as millimeters. Looking at the viewport, we see that the grid still uses the wrong scaling factor for its base unit. Therefore, we have to change this in the viewport overlay settings and use the same scaling factor as in the scene settings. Now, you can use the grid for exact scale or move operations of mesh parts using incremental steps based on the grid in the background. As you can see, the grid can be very useful for exact modeling. Because you can use the grid or subgrid with the snap function in combination with the increment setting. Use the snap function and settings in the header of the 3D viewport to set the snap mode and the related settings. The easiest way to use precise measured movements in Blender is to use the orthogonal view mode in the viewport. You can activate it by using the related keystrokes on the numeric keyboard or using the icon on the right side of the viewport. A nice feature is the splitting of the viewport into multiple viewports with different orthogonal view settings. The key combination is Ctrl-Alt-Q. This splits the viewport into different perspectives simultaneously that you can work with. For our modeling and preparation for 3D printing, we need two more important add-ons. One is the Measure It add-on, which we can use to add measurements and dimensions in our model. The other one is the 3D printing toolbox add-on, which will facilitate mesh analysis and correction in preparation for 3D printing. Make sure that the export add-ons for SDL and X3D format are activated. Both add-ons can be activated in the Edit menu, Submenu Preferences section add-ons in Blender. The Measure It add-on can be found then in the View tab on the left side of the viewport and the 3D printing add-on has its own tab also on the right side of the viewport in Layout and Modeling view mode. Measurement tools. Modeling for 3D printing means working with real-world objects in mind. That means that we often have to be precise and have to measure during the modeling. Blender 2.8 
offers a built-in and improved measure tool for layout and modeling. To use it, follow the following steps. Click on the measure icon to activate the ruler. Click with the left mouse button and drag to draw the ruler. Click with the left mouse button and hold down Ctrl to snap the ruler to the 3D model. For example, to snap it to an edge or to a vertice. There is also an option to view measurement values directly in the mesh itself. For example, the edge length or an angle between two edges. You can activate the measurement display in the viewport overlays in the measurement section. The measurements are not using scale into account, therefore you have to apply scale with Ctrl A every time after you scale the mesh. For displaying measures in the viewport, you can also use the Measure It add-on, making the process of design object with exact measures a lot easier. Using the Measure It add-on, you can quickly create dimension lines for your projects, in some way like a cut tool. Measure It can be used for different tasks. Measure It supports the different Blender measurement systems and you can use the measures with measures, empties, lamps and cameras. I already made a video for the Measure It add-on using Blender 279. I will add a link to the video right here. After we have designed our 3D model, the next step is to clean up our model if necessary. The built-in Mesh Analysis function is just a subset of the 3D Printer Toolbox add-on. Therefore, we can switch to the add-on to do the Mesh Analysis and Correction. The Mesh Analysis panel helps us to eliminate things like intersecting polygons, holes in the model, sharp edges, polygons that aren't flat and details that are too small or too delicate. And last but not least, it helps us to testing the mesh and making the model watertight and manifold. We can analyze the geometry of the mesh looking for some degenerated geometry, typical issues are here, faces that have no area, typical problem is here that you have doubled overlaying geometry, we can solve this in Blender by removing doubles. Also faces that are not flat because of wrong assigned vertices to a face. We can solve this by flattening the face and break it into triangles. Another typical problem is non-manifold geometry like loosely connected faces or model parts. For example, if two parts are connected only via a vertice or an edge. Also faces that are connected to the mesh but not part of the overall surface geometry. Another problem is edges that can be too sharp for printing and on the other side edges that have no length because of overlying geometry also here we can remove we can use the remove doubles function in blender we can have parts in the mesh that are too thin for printing for example, if we use an FDM extrusion printer and our nozzle has a size of 0.4 mm, uh, we cannot print walls with, uh, uh, with the thickness of 0.2 mm. Therefore, we can use the Blender function solidify to make the wall thicker or remodel the mesh. And I also recommend to check the normal direction 
using the Blender tools. You can enable the visualization of normals in the viewport overlays normals section. Just activate the display of normals and set the length to display. And the last example are polygons with no support because of too much overhang. Here we can decrease the overhang or add support in the slicer software out of Blender during the subsequent preparation steps for 3D printing later on. Overall, it is a good idea to apply scale and maybe rotation and location frequently to avoid unpredictable behavior of tools in the workflow path. I also recommend to check the normal direction using the Blender tools. I am now designing a small SD card holder just to have something to print. I add something to the dimensions about 0.2 mm to 0.3 mm for accuracy variations and about 2 to 3% of the overall dimensions for the shrinkage of the material after cooling and aging. Here is a simple workflow for 3D printing using Blender. First create a 3D model that can be used for 3D printing. There is no difference in modeling for 3D printing as any other modeling in Blender. You have to be precise and orderly. Think about how you can print the object using your 3D printer or maybe using a printing service. Here are some key points with the FDM extrusion type printing in mind. How big is the model and how long will it take to print? What kind of material do I use and what are the physical limitations, for example shear forces? How much support will be used? Or another question is, are there parts of my model that stick out? How should the workpiece be positioned on the printer? All those are questions I ask myself during the modeling for 3D printing. Exporting your 3D object. Blender supports the export of STL and X3D files. The file format of X3D files allows to include color, geometry and mat material properties which the current widely used STL format does not support. Before you export your model, it's good practice to export your model into its own layer or as it named now in Blender 2.8, collection. So that you have a good overview what you want to export. Here I focus on the export of the STL format. If you open the dialog, you can also choose that only the selected object is going to be exported. Make sure you're getting the orientation and scale right. Normally you can go with the default settings, if you already set the scale in the scene settings as I described earlier. But still commonly used is STL as the standard export format. A STL file contains the surface geometry of your mesh. This STL file can then be read by a slicer software program, for example like Ultimaker Cura, and can, and can convert it by the slicer into a list of commands named G-code that can be executed by a 3D printer. Why Blender? Because Blender is very powerful. It's free and one of the most popular design tools today. Along with version 2.8, a number of major changes were released. The Blender target market 
is visual 3D assets. Like 3D artifacts used in games, movies and other visual applications. These assets don't need to be conform to the requirements for 3D printing related modeling. Such as water tightness or precision requirements. Blender is not a cut tool. It's a very good mesh modeler. I hope you enjoyed the video and there was some interesting information for you. And maybe there were some good ideas for you to pick up. I'm happy about a like or a subscription and will gladly answer any questions or suggestions if possible. Please add them into the comment section below. Soon there will be more content about Blender 2.8, DIY topics and a lot more. That's all for today. I hope you will have a lot of fun using Blender. My best wishes to you and have a good time.